Hello and welcome. This is Nigel Quinn, and I'm the VP of Development over at LumenVox. And over the years, we have worked with a number of different platforms, providing speech services for those platforms in a number of different ways. Uh, a large partner that we've had over many years has been the Asterisk open source community. Uh, and many people are using this with our speech recognition and, and text-to-speech services. So I wanted to uh, go through and maybe describe and demystify some of the process of how to go about setting up Asterisk, UniMRCP, and LumenVox uh, in a completely start-to-finish way, starting with a bare uh, install of uh, CentOS and ending up with a fully configured and functional system. Uh, I know that uh, there are a lot of steps involved here, and there's certainly some mystery and confusion over how all of these things go together. So hopefully I'm going to uh, make that easier to understand and uh, help you uh, get up and running fairly quickly here. So this is the big picture. We have an asterisk server. It processes phone calls uh, in a number of different ways. And uh, as you can see here, we have UniMRCP, and LumenVox, all installed on the one server. So UniMRCP acts as a module that communicates between Asterisk and the LumenVox media server. Um, and basically, it processes any requests that go out for ASR or TTS resources as part of the call. Uh, now, there are a number of different applications that you can run on Asterisk. Um, but in my example here, I'm going to stay very simple with the asterisk dial plan. And we'll do a few tests running ASR and TTS uh, using MRC, UniMRCP to communicate with uh, LumenVox. So again, in this example that I'm going to be showing you, everything is going to be installed on the one server, this one asterisk server. Now, that is a common configuration that a lot of people use out there. However, it's not the only configuration that's available. Some people prefer to have their uh, LumenVox installation on a separate server completely for backup or redundancy or other reasons. Um, that is perfectly fine as well. And I will try and point out some of the very small, very minor configuration changes between the two. So um, like I say, we're going to be working on a one uh, single server at the moment, but uh, in your own configuration, you're perfectly uh, fine putting it onto a separate box. So here are the installation steps that we'll be running through. Um, the first thing we're going to be installing is something called PJSIP. I'll describe what that is in a minute. Uh, then we'll be installing the asterisk itself. Then there are various components that are part of the UniMRCP setup. And maybe this is one of the confusing areas uh, that people often run into problems with. So I'll try and describe some of those complexities and keep it reasonably straightforward for you. Uh, and then following that is installing LumenVox. Then we'll go ahead and test everything and make sure that uh, we've set everything up correctly. So again, the first step that we're going to be doing is setting up PJSIP. So you might be asking, why would we want to install PJSIP, and what on earth is it? Well, it's the new channel driver for Asterisk and replaces some of the older drivers uh, that are available. Uh, if you need more details on, on what this is and how to go about configuring PJSIP and Asterisk to work together, uh, go ahead and check out Justin Hester's excellent blog at this URL that's on screen. Um, a lot of the installation and configuration of PJSIP and Asterisk that I will be running through actually came directly from Justin's blog here. Uh, it makes a very good read, so I certainly recommend you check it out. So what's happening after we've done PJSIP? Well, the next thing we do would be to install Asterisk 13. But for the remainder of this video, I'm going to be installing PJSIP, so let's move ahead with that. OK, so we have a terminal open. And this is a, an inst a brand new instance that uh, I've installed um, CentOS 6 64-bit, which is installed a VMware ESXi instance in our data center. Uh, however, if this was a physical machine, it would be exactly the same. And if you were using CentOS 5 or our newly supported CentOS 7, uh, the process is almost identical. 
Um, if you would like to check out uh, lumenvox.com slash knowledge base, um, we have very good instructions on setting up um, a variety of different things, including Asterisk and LumenVox on our supported platforms. So again, if you were uh, working with Windows, for example, you would probably want to go and check out our knowledge base. So what do we have? Um, this is our, uh, our instance right here. As you can see, it's a very plain vanilla um, CentOS 6 64-bit installation. So the first thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and do a yum update, just to make sure everything's all up to, up to, up to date and we don't run into any um, conflicts or, or missing dependencies later on. As you can see, this one is already pretty much up to date, so we are in good shape. Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is installing a bunch of dependencies that we're going to be needing for doing our, ver our various builds. Uh, again, much of this comes from um, uh, Justin's blog. So if you need some of the details, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly um, to save you some of the <laughs> some of the details and having to watch uh, watch these things install. But anyway, check out uh, Justin's blog um, for the specific details of the things that we're installing here. Okay, and through the magic of television there, I saved you having to sit through that installation process, which took um, maybe two or three minutes uh, to install. So the next thing we're going to be doing is change to the uh, user source folder. And then we are going to get a copy of uh, pjsip that we want to install. And I'm just going to be doing a wget from this IP address. Again, check out Justin's blog for the details. So we've installed that. Sorry, we've downloaded that. Uh, now we just need to uh, unzip it, which we're doing. And we're going to change into that, uh, that folder. And the next thing we're going to be doing is running a configuration. Um, that sets things up for PJSIP the way that we want it. Again, check out the details on Justin's blog. Now we're going to be doing, as the instructions say there, make dep. Hopefully this all succeeds. And if you actually did run into uh, any errors, either in the configuration phase or the build phase, just have a read what the error says. It's probably some missing dependency uh, that you don't have installed on your machine. Just make sure you go ahead and uh, install that and then repeat the process. And here we're doing a make of the uh, PJ SIP. So we'll just run through this. So while it's running through that, uh, I just want to point out this um, this blog that I mentioned earlier from Justin Hester. Um, again, go to this URI, check it out. There's a lot of detail in here. And again, a lot of these steps are really uh, the things that I'm going to be running through. So definitely worth checking this out. Certainly recommend it. Okay, and it looks as though we are all installed here. So we did the uh, make. Now we need to do make install. Boom. Very easy. Now we need to do LD config. And this basically tells the system, um, has some system magic that kind of tells the system um, about how to link these libraries. So the PJ SIP libraries should now be known to the system. We can kind of verify that if we do something like this. Um, PJ. And you can see here is the the output. So your screen should look something like this. If it doesn't, then backtrack and see what exactly happened. So we've configured and installed uh, PJ SIP. So this is great. Um, the, the, the next step is obviously to proceed on to step two and install asterisk 13. Thank you for watching.